Welcome everyone, welcome to oh, Review it Yourself. It's a really half-hearted side this one, because I really can't bother doing this one, but I've brought along a, an amazing guest to be fair. It's like I really want to do it, but like the film doesn't warrant the effort to talk about it, but give me five minutes, I'll be, I'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> so if anybody hasn't guessed, guessed, we are reviewing Saltburn, the film practically everyone online is talking about. I, I honestly couldn't tell you why. I mean, cause, because... It's largely inoffensive, apart from the offensive bits. And I mean the old-fashioned proper term of offensive, not what people online think class is offensive now, but let's not get into that. So, um, uh, to to oh, to drag me through this... Actually, yeah, I think I'll be the positive one, but we'll find out. Uh, I've got Satsu from Chatsunami along. Welcome, Satsu. How are you doing? All right. Well, I would say it's good to be back, and it is. It's always a pleasure being on your show and everything, but as you alluded to there, the topic we are going to talk about, uh, like, I, I know you're the podcast with the sigh, but let me tell you, this film <laughs> made me sigh an awful lot, just that I, I think it defeated me. And honestly, it's been a good while since I've watched a film where I went, really? This is what the kids are into? <laughs> Well, it explains the state of modern filmmaking, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Oh, I mean, th- yeah. this, I wasn't going to watch this. Like, mm. the lad, at the, my mate at the football, I got the football with every week, was like, oh, I've watched it. It's not worth your time. There's a bit of twist, bit of a twist at the end. I said, well, is it worth watching the film for that? He was like, no. I was like, oh, I can't bother then. Mm-hmm. Because I've obviously, you know, being online, I had all the naughty bits spoiled for me. Like, I didn't know any surprises going into it. I just didn't know, you know, the vine that held these beautiful cherries of moments. Uh, yes, that's sarcasm. And, um, yeah, I, I thought, oh, I'm not going to do this film. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to review it. Because I'm not a film podcast that reviews films up to date. I don't chase after the latest release because most of it's dreadful. Let's not beat about the bush. And I came in from work. I kid you not. And my dad is even more, like, black and white about films than me. Like, my dad's po- doing a podcast with my dad would be brilliant because he'd just say one sentence and it'd be done. And he said to me, oh, I've watched this, this Saltburn. And I was like, have you? What did you think? And he said, oh, you should watch it. You'll love it. And those words, you'll love it. Number one, I don't think I've ever heard my dad say it. Really, I'll be honest. Because he's just not like that. And then two, I thought, well, what, what, what? I've heard enough about this film to know. Well, what, what do you mean I love it? And he was like, just watch it. It's a bit weird, but I think you'll like it. And I thought, right, well, I've got to watch it now. Um. And then, and then I got in last night and I thought, oh, you know, and I'd, I'd done a long drive back because I've been away and I thought, oh, look, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on mm-hmm. and see what it's like. And it wasn't as bad as I thought, not not to get straight to the verdict, but it wasn't as bad as I thought, I thought. But overall, I thought it was neither now nor summit, really. Like it was, you know, apart from if it wasn't for the minging bits in it, nobody would be talking about this. Let, let's, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably more how you feel, given given how I've heard heard you on the old chats. Oh, no, you're completely right, because the only reason I watched this film was because, and I think it was a couple of weeks ago, it was when the bad weather was hitting us, and my partner and I couldn't really get out. You know, we were looking out the window, there were trees blowing over, and I'm pretty sure there was a, a poor OAP, like, blowing in the wind and everything, the way to Oz, you know. It was, it was like, pandemonium outside, so we're like, you know what, we'll just stay in, we've got stuff in the cupboards, and I thought, you know what, we'll, we'll just watch a film, you know, we'll have a lazy day, and I was flicking through all the streaming services, you know how it is, you're like, oh, I've got to find something, yeah. And I had heard kind of in the periphery that Saltburn was a film that people were talking about a lot. And all I knew, I, like, I went into this relatively blind, um, and I came out of it relatively blind as well, but we'll get on to that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we, um, yeah, I, I put it on. So I turned around to my partner and I said, oh, people are talking about the Saltburn. And all I knew about it was there was like a TikTok trend yeah. or something going around where... Before, before I, we get to it, yeah, Satsu, you, mm-hmm. Satsu you, you're still with your partner, right? This didn't, oh, you yeah, didn't no, break no, your no. partner. Right, good. Oh, yeah. Continue. I mean, to be fair, it's not the worst, like, spoilers here, it's not the worst film I've ever seen, but it is fairly kind of middle and up there. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, it could have it been worse. It could have been your mum. Do you know what I mean? It could have been... Oh, true, our family. Your, your yeah. grandma. Do you know what I mean? It could have mm. been... Horrendous. Yeah, absolutely. 
yeah, but I said to her, oh, do you want to watch this? And she was like, yeah, oh, why not? You know, we weren't really jumping into this, if that makes sense. We weren't going in as if, oh, we need to watch Salt Bar. No, it's going to be amazing. We're like, yeah, why not? We watched it. And throughout the whole film, I was just like, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I recommended this film. Because, <laughs> like, as I said, the only thing I knew was, like, this trend where people were dancing to, I think it's Bodies on the Dance Floor, which is such murder, a catchy tune. Murder, 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 murder on the Dance Floor. floor. Sorry, Murder yeah. on the Dance Floor. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm cool and hip. <laughs> that song from years ago. <laughs> yeah, thing is, um, thing is so sad too. I remember when these songs yeah. came out. Everyone's like, oh my God, this soundtrack's amazing. I'm like, yes. Do you not remember these songs coming out? Oh no, yeah. you're about three. Okay. But yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. let, let, let's, you know, people are watching this because Barry, and I think, I think it's meant to pronounce be pronounced Keegan, I think. Um, yeah. Irish fella. He, uh, we'll get to the accent later. Don't you worry. Um, yeah, honest to goodness. I was. Yeah, see, when yeah. I was watching it, I immediately thought, I wonder what Sean thinks of this accent. <laughs> because I thought, oh, that's cool. He's Irish. And then he slipped into, like, North English. And I was like, wait, no. Oh, right. No, no. He must be North English. Oh, silly. Satsu, you know. And then he slipped back into Irish. I'm like, hold on. What is going on here? Yeah, I, so I was like, well, I want, yeah. <laughs> well, Scott, for anyone listening from America or around the world that's not from England or, or the mm. UK, I should say, or Britain or Scotland, whatever you want to call mm. it. Right. Liverpool is where people are called Scousers, right? I, I, mm. I'm not sure why. Where I live, a lot of people came from, like, Liverpool mm. to up here. So there's certain similarities in the way that I say shirt and stuff like that. I'm not mm. from Liverpool. But I, I've got a good ear for it. Like, if I'm around people from down there, I pick it up easy, um, like I did at uni. But but the similarities. But I can hear this. Scouse is a very, very strong accent, and it's a very, very difficult one to do. And, I'm, and like, you, but you're right, you can hear it. Because certain points, it sounds pretty good. The start, it was a bit ropey. Then I thought, oh, okay, it's pretty good. And then there's one part where he sounds like he's a Geordie. Like, there's a, there's mm. a certain bit where I thought, that sounds like, People I know, I'm not a Jody either. And it was just like, what, what, where are you going for? And then part of me was thinking, is this part of the plot? Is it part of the point? Because he does seem to change like his voice and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was, yeah, a bit of a, I mean, I've, I've heard worse. I've heard worse. But, but the thing was mm. about it, though, is just the fact that people online, when, you know, I was reading the discourse about this film, they were like, Oh, it's, and again, not to spoil it too early, but they're like, oh, it's because he's pretending, he's doing this and that, he's from a different class and everything. But oh, you don't choose a Scouse? You don't, don't choose oh, Scouse? Yeah. Of all, if, if, even if he wasn't Scouse, which you can kind of argue because mm-hmm. the parents don't sound as Scouse as him. Well, I mean, whatever. But it's like, what, out of all the accents to pick, why? Why yeah. would you do it? Yeah, it um, seems a very specific for an accent out of all of them it seems like he really honed in and did not like Liverpool (laughs) it's just like yeah I'll choose them that's the right accent for Oxford you're like really okay (laughs) fair enough very very strange Mm. I I never really got to the bottom of like how he's there like Mm. mind you I tell you what let's let's just be honest right the characters are way for thin they're like way for thin ham the mm. plot's wafer thin. And not oh, in a kind okay. of, oh, you know, it's clever. It's, it's just absolutely wafer thin. And to be fair, I, I actually, I'm mild, this, uh, this is me all over, I mildly enjoyed it. Like, I, mm. I didn't find it bad, but I do think it was, you know, I think I got half an hour in and I thought, you know, it's very, it's very inoffensive. It's very, you know, you put it on, the music's mm. decent. It's got an, enough of a plot to keep you engaged. For the ladies and some of the men, you've got mm-hmm. some very nice... In fact, you've got some very, for everybody, you've got some very nice-looking people to look at, if nothing else. Saw a little bit too much of some people, but we'll get to that later. Depends, oh, yeah. you know, whatever boat you whatever floats your boat, there's something here for you, basically. Mm. Uh, literally, I think. And, yeah, you know, I mean, to be fair, though, the start of it, right? You know, the whole with, rejoice, and it just makes me think of Johnny English. I can't help it. I just <laughs> yeah. can't help it. I just, I just want to start being like, uh, do you or do you not have the words tattooed on your bottom? Jesus is coming. Look busy. I just I, every mm. time I just anyway. Um, but yeah, you see, you know, the the first scene though, I did watch it and kind of try to analyze it a bit till I realized if, uh, like twenty minutes in, it wasn't that kind of film. 
Because, like, when he wanders in, everyone else is like, for, for a start, right, he wanders in looking like Wolf and the Inbetweeners. That, that really put me off as well. So I was really struggling to what like to take the film seriously, like, as I was watching it. Um, and then, <laughs> I don't know, it was just like, you know, you see it's the class of 2006, hence kind of the throwback songs, which we don't think it's that far away, but it's 18 years, which, oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Don't I know, say that. I know, You're maybe I, I know, old. <laughs> I know. Don't, don't, right. I was in a museum. Mm. Oh, no, I don't want to get into that. But yeah, you, you realise your age all the time. Mm. Somebody called me sir in a flipping cafe yesterday. Mm. Sir. Oh, I was like, don't call me sir. Um, mm. anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll get, I'll do, let's not dwell too much on the age. Mm. Um, yeah, and then, you know, you see this Felix character. Then Reese Shearsmith turns up, who I love from inside number nine. And who's basically oh, just course, the, yeah. the teacher makes the student feel a freak for reading the reading list. I mean, yeah, mm. like, nobody reads the reading list, but he does. And it's like right from the start, you're thinking, right, no one's dropped him off. Everybody else is getting dropped off by their loved ones or mm. their butlers or their maids or whatever. Um, and then you get him, he just wanders in on his own. And you get that he's very like, even at this point, you get this is someone who like does their homework. And, you know, and then basically he just gets ignored because this fella Farley uh, knows his mum, or like admired her from afar. Because that's like that's like the first hint of somebody like having a bit of love for somebody from afar. Like that's a mi- there's a lot of voyeurism in this film. There's a lot of looking at people through windows and standing on a lawn in the middle. I mean, I don't know where they live. Or how, I mean, it's the summer of 2006. It's, it's clearly not the winter because there'd be a lot of like people freezing to death if not. Is yeah. it off? I mean, just how many times can you have someone standing outside of a bloody window looking up at someone? It's like, oh, what, come on. Yeah, do you know what it reminded me of? Have you seen the show You on Netflix? Is it's, that the one where the is that the one where she has an affair with the guy? And it, I think I've seen a couple of. I think I saw a few episodes of it. I think. Yeah, it's about the guy who he is. I think is he, he absolutely in a massive? Do, yeah, is it the one where the guy follows him in the shower? Is is that the, is that what? No, that's a weird. No, All I mean yeah, is that. But, yeah, is it's it similar. Not that? Oh, sorry. No, maybe, sorry, go on. No, I'm sure. Because yeah. I've seen a series where a woman is married, but she mm-hmm. starts having an affair with this guy who's very, very well endowed. And then the husband follows, like, goes to the same gym as the guy. To, like, like, oh, no, it's not that, but I know it's exactly oh, okay, the enough. one you I mean. Because, because, it's all, yeah, I have seen again. that scene as well, and I was horrified. <laughs> I don't, I like, Jesus. Well, I, yeah. that, uh, leave something yeah. for the rest of the class. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know what. Okay, sorry, I don't think I have. Yeah, that. sorry. Go on. So use like a, it's about a guy who works in a bookshop in America and initially starts off quite charismatic and everything, and then you realise he's a wee bit screwed up in the head. He is very voyeuristic. He keeps looking at them through open windows, which. I'm not justifying that behaviour, but the fact that they just stand in front of, like, an open window on, like, a public path, you're kind of like, come on now, what the, what the hell are you doing here? Um, but, yeah, you're completely right about the voyeuristic aspect of it. But the thing is, this whole film has nuggets of ideas, but they never really quite gel together. You know, you've got the themes of obsession, which then is kind of cut completely by the end of the film when it's like, yeah. oh, no, he wasn't obsessed with them. So it's like, all right, well, that theme's out the window. What yeah. about I'd voyeurism? What reminded... Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I was no, just no, going to... Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, go on. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. I was just going to say, like, you know, voyeurism, it's like that's... Like, everything is kind of cut by the end of the film. And I know we'll get on to it, but, you know, all the themes, it's just like, oh, no, we don't need this theme, we don't need that theme. So you're kind of like, well, why am I here, Saltburn? <laughs> why am I here yeah. trying to yeah. understand these themes, these things, when it's been done so much better in other films? And I will get on to that, apologies, but, yeah. Oh, it's just, all right, yeah. yeah just yeah. spend your time more wisely. Mm-hmm. Travel, get in the car. Anyway, let tell you what it did remind me of in terms of films. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Boy Next Door, you know, the one with uh, Jennifer Lopez. Did you, did you ever see that one? Vaguely, yeah. She, she's mm. like, she basically, she's a bit of a cougar. Oh, mm. Mind you, she's beautiful in it. And she ends up sleeping with the, na- like, I think the neighbor's son. It, it, it's all kosher. He's like 20 odd or something. Mm. He's like yeah. 19 or 20 or 21. He's, he's, he's a lot older, clearly, but he's meant to be about 21. So she mm. sleeps with the neighbor's, like, son, I think. 
uh, a twenty year old he is, has a one night stand with him, and then basically he becomes obsessive. It, it, that's a better film actually. I'd recommend that one for you. That, that's a decent one. Um, but yeah, it, it. I know what you mean. It never really like. It's like one of these films where it feels like it's trying to do so much and trying to be really kind of like pretentious and a little bit like mm-hmm. have all these re really highfalutin ideas, but it never really sticks a landing on any of them. So it's like, well, if it, you know, because there's nothing wrong with going for like different, you know, different points and different themes, but then at least stick the landing on one of them because if you don't, then it's all just like, well, because it becomes just like a murder mystery. Spoilers at the end, like mm-hmm. uh, someone gets the flipping breathing tube ripped out, and I'm sorry, but. That's going to come up in a report. I don't care how rich you are. Like, someone's mm. going to notice. So, but we'll get to that. Um, yeah, because, I mean, that's what I said on Twitter. I was like, this is like the raunchiest episode of Midsummer Murders I think I've ever seen. And it's probably the same length as well. But, you know, it's just, <laughs> it, like, as you said at the very beginning, it's a film that, if not for the raunchiness and the kind of scenes like that, this film would fade into obscurity. It would oh, completely, totally forgettable. Like, totally forgettable. Because this is something I was saying to you, actually, when we were discussing it off air, but I remember thinking, at least at the time, that I've seen so many films that have done this better. One of the films I recommended to you was Parasite. And, of course, for anyone who doesn't know Parasite... Is, is that the one... Is, yeah. I tell you what, I think I know mm-hmm. what the poster... Is that the poster where the guy's in the garden and someone stood behind some French dogs? Yes. Yeah. That's the one. Right, I've yeah. not seen it, but it, it's yeah. on my radar, yeah. Yeah, I mean, without any spoilers, it's about a very low, low-income family, and they, of course, live in South Korea, they live in terrible conditions, they are hopping from medial job to medial job, and then one of the family members gets a very prestigious job as, I think it's an English tutor, or some kind of tutor, to the daughter of a very wealthy family. And then eventually these people from this poor family start to insert themselves into the lives of this obscenely rich family. And there are so many amazing themes, like the cinematography as well is amazing, the acting's amazing. It's just it's such a good film in terms of that idea of trying to say something with it, you know, the rich versus poor. But with this film they begin that way because they kind of show the main characters being the fish out of water or look not comfortable with all the others because they are uber rich and he comes from a really rough uh, background, although technically he doesn't, but we'll get on to that. he says, yeah. Yeah, and then by the end of it, it's like you're not really and again, like for the instance of Parasite or someone else brought up uh, the talent of Mr. Ripley, you know films like that, it's like they have a point and they have an idea and something to say, but for Saltburn it's like over two hours of a crazy guy who can't decide on an accent and then he gets what he wants at the end, even though you can see it like a mile off Oh, yeah, I I realised, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like when people said, oh, what an amazing twist, you know, at the very end, I was like, that was was a twist? What the Yeah, was was that meant? Yeah, was that meant to not know? Like, I mean, I'll I'll say the extent of it was like, okay, Mm. that was maybe a surprise. But not the fact that he was... What, what, did you... Did anybody... I'm sorry, right, but did anybody seriously watch this and go, well, that's a perfectly natural, normal death, really? You didn't kind of see a bit of a... Don't become a detective. <laughs> don't, don't, that's, not, that's not your raison d'etre. Mm. Don't be doing that. But don't you just love uh, testy chat tsunami? I love it, me. Like, like I love, see, this is what I like. I like it when, you know, you just got a towel on it. But it, like oh, I said, no, I, no. I genuinely, it was okay. But the more that yeah. you start looking at it with, the more that it falls apart. I mean, he, he mm. sticks a pin in the bike tyre, so the bike just happens to break. Surely you would see it function. You wouldn't get on it and mm. ride it. And the minute you got on and tried to ride it anyway, whatever. It's this, mm-hmm. just, it's one of them things, but, it's like, I'm trying to do the logic again, and it, it doesn't work. But doesn't I think work. what, like, speaking of testy Satsu here, like, I genuinely <laughs> think, as I said before, I think, again, if this film didn't have the raunchy scenes, then it definitely would have been forgotten, but that's what I hate about this film, because there is no reason why these particular scenes should be in this film. You know, we've got the, and I'll try to be as you know, uh, I won't go too in-depth about it, but, you know, you've got the um, 
gamer bathwater, <laughs> I'll say. Um, moment. Yeah. yeah, you've got the vampire scene. Trust me, you don't want to know the context. You've got the improvised scene um, near the end with a, um, a boy in his grave. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And, you know, there's all these like really disgusting moments and it makes me think that whoever was writing this script, they didn't put it in for some kind of art housey or artistic vision. I don't believe for a fact anybody saw a guy shagging a mound of dirt and went, that is my artistic vision. That is what I want to leave this mortal plane and leave behind. Because I was like, you you really let that guy... Like, can I talk about that scene? Like, no. Yeah, knock yourself obviously. up. Knock yourself yeah. up. So there's go, a scene go for it, Satsu. He certainly <laughs> did. So there's a scene towards the end where a certain character dies and the... Felix character... dies. He dies. Yeah. Here's the thing, right. Before we get yeah, yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, right. But, but why, why does bloody... What's it, can't remember his bloody name. Why, why does... What's, what's his name, the main fella? I can't remember his name. That's why I keep calling them the main. <laughs> oh, Ollie, like, Ollie, right, Ollie. Ollie why, yeah, yeah. why does Ollie not just? Why does he not take a pass at Felix? He never mm. takes a pass. He never makes a pass at him. Mm-hmm. And and I'm sorry, right, but that Felix guy is clearly clearly interested in him. Who sits mm. in their bath and enjoys a bit of a lawn time, but leaves mm. the door to your guest bedroom with your friend in it slightly mm. ajar? R- really? And who 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 makes like big morning noises as if you're trying to attract their attention? If you're doing certain things, you don't want to be loud. Like, I, I just don't get why he didn't just... Because I, I just like, didn't... I didn't buy the... I didn't buy the obsession. And I think if you don't buy the obsession, I, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, at the, at the start, it starts off with, oh, I loved him, but I wasn't in love with him. The end, it ends with, oh, actually, I hated him. And then you're like, yeah, but did you? But then it's like, you know, you know I don't think that comes into it. I think, like, you just wanted... Mm-hmm. You clearly just wanted the house and all that kind of thing. You wanted the... You wanted to not not have him, but become him. Mm-hmm. But then, if that's all you wanted, why are you pretending to be so distraught that he died because he was just a part of the means to the and means to an end? It doesn't really make much sense. Like, and then you throw in because for me, it's like it's I wasn't. I mean, I'd heard about them, and it, it was a bit like, mm. and I expected the scenes to be worse than they were. I mean, they were, they were a bit, mm, but they were like, all right, is that it type thing? But then you're just thinking. This is just a guy who who will who wants to get to a point and will do essentially mm-hmm. anything. He'll sleep with anyone. He will manipulate well, except, situations. Well, you say that you'll sleep with anyone except for Felix. I mean, like of all the well, people, yeah. as you said, yeah, it's the literally the only person he doesn't sleep with. I mean, he sleeps with the cousin before he sleeps with him, and you're kind of yeah. like. You've got your priorities mixed up here, Ollie. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> you know I, 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 yeah, it seems so weird. Like, yeah, it's like around Robin, I'm going shagging everybody else except for yeah. Felix. You're like, what? What is wrong with you? Well, there's several things wrong with him. Um, but well, he's uh, really yeah. a psychopath, isn't he? He's a psychopath. Yeah, he's an but, absolute psychopath. Yeah, yeah, but for people to treat it as if it's like a big twist or things oh, like no, that, like no. you can clearly, even when there's like an hour to go, you're like, this guy is a psycho. And it's not like a psychological profile of, because this is something I could understand if you were completely in his like point of view and everything, if it was like a slow decline into, I don't know, the pressures of academia or the pressures of class struggle. Because let's face it, the idea of class struggle is like a very popular theme, especially in tradition as a whole. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. And you think, well, that would at least justify why he's so angry. But, yeah. you know, then you just kind of whip around and say, oh, no, he's a psycho. And going back to that scene again, I was actually laughing at all the memes online because there was a lot of people saying, oh, I can't believe that scene where basically he goes to the grave of Felix and he humps it. He takes out his trousers, he humps it. And everyone was saying it's online... Bit, it's the bit that far away, like, he literally... <laughs> he literally, like... <laughs> he literally makes a flipping hole in the ground, and it's like, what What are you... What are you... What are you doing? Like, it yeah, goes back most... in between us again. It just oh. feels... It feels like they got this really art script, 
Oh. And then they were basically like, can we just throw a few in between, a bit, a few bits of the in betweeners in there, oh. but then make them a bit more extreme because we can get away with it because it's a film. Oh, but yeah, yes, but that... it just makes me, it was just, I just thought, oh, really? Because I, oh, I no. think yeah. you, you got the point, you got the point with like him crying and him sobbing and him taking his shirt off. And even if he'd have laid on it naked, I would have been like, right, okay, I, I still get the point. Like you've killed, like you've killed him. So oh, mm. I don't, it was just stupid. Like, Oh, anyway, oh, no. sorry, it, go on. It was, it was just like a cartoon character um, where he was genuinely <laughs> just like, oh, look, I'm crying. And as you said, like, if he had kept it at, he took the shirt off and everything, and, oh, he's crying over it, you know, that kind of hammers it in. Like, this is definitely the film of less is more, but for the script writers, the directors, I, they just thought more is more, but... I remember watching that, and I saw memes of it online, and people were like, oh, it's funny, because the main character, or sorry, the main actor, uh, Barry Keegan, he said, oh, I'm going to improvise this, what do you think? And the director said, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good scene I want in my film. And I was laughing, because I thought, oh, ha ha, funny meme. <laughs> ha, funny, this is so funny, guys. And I was like, Oh Jesus, this isn't a joke. This was thing actually is, though, improvised, yeah. Thing is, doesn't isn't it a good example of like modern films though that really when you take away the shock and you take mm. away those scenes, so like the bathtub scene, mm. the scene with the the is sister uh, Felix's sister, the scene mm-hmm. with you know the scene, all the all them kind of the, the grave scene. You know, you take away those scenes and really what what does the film have? Mm-hmm. Not an awful lot. It is. It does very much feel like style of the substance, which makes sense for the characters. Mm-hmm. But the one scene, I will give the scene, the film credit, because I thought the scene after Felix died, I thought was really good. But I'll, I'll get to that. But um, mm-hmm. for, for me, though, it was like, I, I think the characters, I think the actors and actresses do a decent job. I don't think they do a bad job. I mean, they're all like, they are giving it, giving it the best. Um, I thought the guy who played Farley was pretty good because him and, him and Ollie have this kind of like, weird animosity but you can tell it's kind of a i pretend to hate you but i secretly want to screw you mm-hmm. um but it, it, it basically i wrote down remember how cal treated jack in titanic like you're almost human mm-hmm. basically yeah. that but with an awful lot more sexual tension just mm-hmm. put it that way um yeah and the yeah i, I mean yeah it, i can't yeah i mean then you end up with flipping lurch aka duncan the butler who's clearly got clearly got he knows who this ollie guy is um, Rosamund Pike and Richard E. Grant, who were quite really good. I thought Rosamund Pike was brilliant. To be mm. fair, were uh, Venetia, um, Phoenix's sister. Oh, poor dear Pamela, who again felt like somebody out of Bridget Jones, uh, played by Carrie Mulligan, who I couldn't. I was thinking, where do I know her face from? And then mm. Ali Sparrow from Doctor Who, and then I was like, oh, of course it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you realise how long it's been since that episode came out. But yeah, I mean. And the whole, like, oh, we're going to be sharing a bathroom. I hope you don't mind. Like, there's no other bathrooms in this mansion house. with about 500 bedrooms. Like, you'd have to walk all the way. And I'm thinking, I thought at one point, and I'm pretty sure, like, Felix was angling his way. Because they said, oh, he's much nicer than, like, the, the, the boy he brought last summer. And, like, yeah, we've seen Felix sleep with women in this. But it's, like, mm-hmm. it seems like pretty much if you're rich. Yeah, mm-hmm. here, here we go. At one point, I thought Ollie was going to get with his mum. Because he's yeah, like, oh. like at the very end, you mean, where they're like, oh, no, 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 together, I mean, yeah, a, or, oh, well, I guess I mean, in general, was, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, there's that yeah, scene, isn't it, where, right. where he says, like, oh, you're so beautiful, it's awesome. and it's like, um, Ollie, yeah, and what I'll, are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ollie, simmer down, Ollie, Ollie. <laughs> why, are you, why are you removing that tube? No, let's not go there. Um, Pamela was <laughs> Pamela, I mean, I'm surprised they didn't, to be fair. Yeah. Because I thought they were when I was watching it, and he was like taking off like the bed sheets, I was thinking, Oh Christ! They're not going to go. There. They're not going, to, and then they didn't. So. Yeah, fortunately, they went with like a body horror thing. Anyway, um, I did like the Pamela character. I thought the way that the passive aggressiveness was sublime, where they're mm. clearly trying to get rid of her. About oh, the full moon. We're all about to lose our minds, which obviously is the, I think the the poster, mm. um, tagline. Yeah, this is. The more I talk about it, the more I'm just like, oh, it was it was all right. I, I don't know what I was expecting. I was expect I was expecting to be more shocked. I've got to be honest. I don't know what it would take, but I was very much like, and obviously it had all been spoiled for me anyway. But it was. I oh, thought oh, the bath. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I thought that, no, no. It had been spoiled by a few people, but mm. I thought the bathtub scene was going to be much, much worse. To be perfectly honest, but 
yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I, I, what, what, and then why are they all just naked in a hay field at one point? Like, yeah, we're, we're rich. We lie naked on really, really scratchy, you know, hair. Who doesn't drinking to, you know? And then, like, it's the bit where, like, he strips off. And I think Farley's like, oh, congratulations. Uh, and you think, oh, he's just a piece of meat for them, whether they want him sexually or whether they just want him there because, oh, we've got this poor little urchin who, like, has ridden a bus in his life and that's so exotic mm-hmm. to us. And it's very much, you know, and then, like you said, I thought there was going to be points where it was going to actually maybe delve into that about, mm-hmm. you know, richness and what it means. I mean, there was a film, I can't remember what the hell it was, I can't remember what it was called. It was based on the Bullingdon Club, I think, but I can't remember what it was called. But anyway, it'll come to me. It's, it's a film about a lot of rich kids at Oxford or wherever, one of those universities. And they basically just go around and, like, smash places to bits and then, like, give them, like, thousands of pounds and pay for it. Can't remember what it was called. The Posh Boys? Uh, maybe, Posh, yeah. Something I, like that. I vaguely know what you're talking about. Yeah, it rings a bell, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I thought, like, because they have that whole bit about... um. That whole bit where she says, you know, a lot of people get lost at Saltburn. And I thought, oh, okay, they're gonna, are they gonna start down in, in, no, no, they're not. They're just, because I, I watched it half an hour in, I thought, oh, this is pretty vanilla. 48 minutes in, I thought, oh, things are starting to turn a bit. This is where, you know, I thought, why has Felix left his bathroom door open when he's, you know, enjoying himself in the bath? He's got a bedroom. Why is he getting in the, whatever. Don't think about it too much. Um, to be fair, the, the worst part about that bathroom scene to me was the noise of the slurping. It was mm. awful. Like, it was really loud. It's like, it's like nails on a chalkboard. You know, certain noises just really, like, do you in. And you think, oh, I can't. I don't want to listen to that. Awful. I think, like, like, see if I'm coming back in that scene. I think what's even weirder is the fact that the bath took so long to drain. You know, I guess it's like a big <laughs> rich person's <laughs> that's bath. Not, but... That's not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, he did, you know, he washed himself, but then he left the bathroom. Like, he didn't even bother drying himself in the bathroom. What, what, what's his problem? <laughs> Just, like, I, he, I he left it, like, uh, with enough time that Ollie could sneak in and then slurp it. And you're like, huh, what what is wrong with you? <laughs> Again, yeah. many things, but... Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you, though. It just, it seems as if, and I, I think this is one of the things that offends me about this film, other than, you know, the obviously offensive scenes, but I think it's more of the fact that there are scenes that are genuinely good in this film, like the cinematography is great, the yeah. characters themselves, although they're way for thin, there was a direction that they could have taken them. Yeah. You know, all the pieces were here. It was pretty much like a Lego script. Like, all the pieces were here. They just had to put it in the right ways. But instead, they decided to get, I don't know, mega blocks with those, like, raunchy scenes being like, oh, we're going to add these in that don't make sense. We're going to add that. And, you know, like, there's great scenes in this. So you know that the director, all the cinematographers, the editors, like, they know how to do a really good scene. Like, that scene where Felix dies the next morning and they are trying to have, like, some kind of normality. And they yeah, the that curtains. was the best scene. Oh, yeah. That was the best scene uh-huh. by a mile, yeah. That was yeah. incredible. Like, I, I don't want people to think when I say, oh, I didn't like Saltburn, that I thought everything was bad. Like, moments like that and the acting was incredible, the set design, like, everything was just so well done in some regards. And then... Again, it was like, oh no, we're losing the audience's attention. Let's make them drink bath water. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> Let's make them shag a grave. You're like, no, no, that's not yeah. how you make a good film. Yeah. Come on. Come yeah. On, yeah. Yeah. You needed somebody to go, can, can we just, like, hey, if that's your fetish, fair play, but can we just take these out of what's meant to be a film, please? Because it's not, it's not that kind of film. And you like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to put this in that way. It sounds really, really odd to say, but like, if you took those scenes out and kept the voyeurism, like when he's watching people mm. on the lawn or whether he's watching Felix in the bath or whether he's, or whatever, you can keep a lot of it. I, I wasn't, I didn't think the scene with the, with the sister, what, sorry, it's not his sister, it's Felix's sister. I didn't think mm. when, when Ollie gets with Venetia, I didn't think that was as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, if you think about it mm. too much, it's a bit, but it's a natural thing. And it's like, okay, I kind of get, right, if that's, you know, whatever, crack on type mm. thing. 
And it wasn't as horrendous as I thought it was going to be because they showed a lot of it from, like, the window and mm. Farley was watching them. And, again, it's very much about people being watched. So I think they could have kept that in. The bath bit, uh, but it was the grave bit where you felt like, right, that's that's a bit too far now. You needed somebody to say, right, this is not going to have the effect we want. It's going to be popular, but people are just going to laugh at it. But but maybe that maybe they knew that you know I mean there's there's some all right stuff. The script's not terrible, but it's very much it's quite blunt. There's not a lot of nuance in there. I would have liked the film to have gone a bit nuanced and a bit deeper into the characters mm-hmm. rather than just having them, um, because they've got two hours, they've got plenty of time to do it. And I mean, you know, the sister says like Felix never likes sharing his toys and even the ones he doesn't want to play with anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's like. I don't, right, well, does that mean he, what, like, I don't know, I just felt like the whole relationship or, or friendship, whatever you want to call it, the between, like, Ollie and Felix just didn't make sense. I was like, why, why has Felix got Ollie around? Is it because he's been manipulated mm-hmm. that way? Is it because he's actually friends with him? Is he just a player thing? Is he, they never really, like, settled it, and then he's dead before they even, and it's like, because that's meant to be the backbone of it, but really it's mm-hmm. kind of not. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that just, Drags on this film. You yeah, know, and then they have the party, and it's like, why are they yeah. having the party? And then you get that woman who's like, oh, me first, you're on my left, because they act like the Bloody Royal family, for whatever mm-hmm. strange reason. And uh, yeah. she's out of uh, this time with Alan Partridge. She always seems to play really obnoxious people in, in the things I watch, but damn, she's good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. And then Farley basically puts it on a plate for Ollie. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you get this, this, this worst karaoke scene in history. It's just hideous, absolutely hideous. Uh, with the whole I love you, you pay my rent, and it's like, yeah. oh, wow, that's subtle. Like, oh, my God, like, oh, yeah, I get, like, oh, God. Like, it I get, felt it, at times like yeah. it was trying to be really clever, and it's like, this is um, not clever. Anyway, but that, uh, yeah, no, sorry, I was just going to say, that is the thing, though. It's like they were going for that, oh, know your place play kind of vibe, but at the same time. Yeah, but his place was between everybody else's legs. That's the thing. Yeah, (laughs) but I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, I could completely understand. Like, I wasn't expecting them to come from, you know, like a council estate or something. You know, I have to say, I liked that twist, but... The, you know when they oh it was obvious I he's... thought it was obvious his dad was still alive I thought oh come no yeah way, I got, yeah. when they got to the house right. I, that's what I thought I oh thought, no the best oh, bit yeah. the best scene it shows which is a good line actually from Felix's mm-hmm. character to show how out of touch the rich people are right <laughs> literally he pulls up to this house that is literally I'm not being funny in London it's about a million pounds up mm. north that that's easy like a four five hundred thousand pound house easy mm. in a decent area right Okay, maybe 250,000, 300,000, where I am. But anyway, like, a decent play, mm-hmm. decent location, really, really nice house. And Felix goes, oh, you, your mum and dad seem to have got their act together. I've like, got their act together? You don't get a house like that. Like, get in your, you don't, like, you know, it's like, what are you, it's like, what? That's like a dream house for, like, 90% of the people in this country. Like, 90, you know, what, what do you, I like, mean, yeah, oh, that was, God. um, that was, like, keeping up appearances levels of... <laughs> And I was expecting yeah. Hyacinth's bouquet to come out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, honestly, but, um, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean... But, again, it's that idea that, you know, when you find out that he is from a middle-class family, like, he's not... I wouldn't say he was working class, again, because of... Like, even though he got the scholarship, like, he's not uber-rich, but at the same time, he's still well-off enough to have a comfortable life. You know, he doesn't need to insert him into that. But that's the thing, though. There's no real reason why he inserts himself into that world. (laughs) Which is... Well, yeah. uh (laughs) But that's the thing, though. It's like, there's no real scene where he's like... Well, because he seems to be trying to have friends. He seems to be trying to have friends. He's never had a friend. But he's psychopathic, Mm -hmm. so clearly he's never going to have that connection. And he tries to... And even the people who want to make a connection with him, like the maths mm-hmm. whiz kid, who himself is a bit socially awkward. Um, I mean, he got out not, really not, well, not though, to be a, fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, in, not in a Jodie Whittaker 13 Doctor socially awkward way. I mean an actual socially awkward way. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, God, yeah. That, that's about the only thing that could have made this worse, putting there in it. But outside, yeah, like he gets rid of him pretty quickly. And I think that's he was trying to like have a bit of a connection with him, but but he just shuns people, and it's like, okay, so what's he going to do, live in that house the rest of his life on his own? Because mm. he is essentially, like, he's he's a loner, he, he wants people, but he doesn't, he, he can't make that connection, and that that is, like, the quintessential explanation of a psychopath. 
they they don't see other humans as humans. They just see them as like brain dead pawns that just so happen to walk around and but they're not the same as me. Like that like I wanted them to go into that. Like he's clearly a psychopath and Barry Keegan plays it very well. I mean he looks like a bloody psycho, like his eyes and the way he mm. acts in different scenes. It's a good performance and there's some good performances throughout, but as a whole it was it was you know, and then there's bits that I thought, oh, this is interesting. They're making you doubt whether it's real because he, he, he ties after the karaoke incident where basically Farley puts him in his place. He, mm-hmm. um, he punches, he puts a tie around his hand and punches the mirror. But then the next day the mirror's fixed and it's like, hang on, there's no way somebody could have gone out, bought a mirror and reinstalled it. Like if it was a couple of days or a week, yeah, okay, like the rich, but this doesn't make any, like, so has he not punched the mirror and like he basically mm-hmm. goes into Farley's room and, Shags him. There's there's no way around it. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, I saw that a mile off. So they see when oh, yeah, they had yeah. the thing the next morning, and they're like, "Oh, Farley was trying to sell off the you know priceless like antiques and things." And I was like, "Well, obviously it's been Ollie that's texted from his phone." And then they brought it up at the end with the swelling music as a, "Oh, can you believe it? Farley didn't do it." And I'm like, "Well." Yeah, because I got a brain. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, so and so. Then why Farley didn't mm-hmm. go? Oh, by the way, he was in my room last night, mm-hmm. having a bit of how was your father? And uh, basically, yeah. I left my phone. But who? Well, why isn't your phone password protected? Far anyway, I'm not going anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, and he was trying to sell some plates. What? Cause he needs the money. Like really? Like ri- like really? Like what? Where's the motivation there? Like I wanted to make yeah. a couple of requ- on these plates, even though you're giving me probably thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands a year. Yeah. Um, and, then I said, and again, I was just like, why are they actually, sorry, why are they actually yeah. friends anyway, go on. No, sorry, I was just going to say, what actually happened to Farley at the end? Because the last time you see him... And it, I but no, be... so I think, I think the insinuation is, so mm. he's bang on the sniff at, at the mm. party. Oh, yeah, and yeah. The insinuation is, and I think it is, I think he drugged, uh, uh, Ollie had drugged the champagne bottle, which he gave to uh, Felix, which is why he threw... Oh, yeah, I remember that, that yeah. It, it, I think that's drugs. So I think the insinuation is meant to be that the dad and the family think that he got the drugs from Felix, and they're oh. like, "Get out!" So I think he like gets expelled. Mm. But he even says to him like, "I'll I'll be back," but we don't know what happens to him. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, because I that, think that he's was... he's literally the only character out that group. Because I mean, the majority of them get killed off by Ollie, but yeah, he's the only one that I think he just gets thrown out the house, even though he does say. This guy is literally a psychopath, and yeah. yeah, it's it's uncomfortable to watch, but at the same time, it's like you can see where he's coming from. Yeah, um, he's like go go back to go back to that creepy doll factory where they make all of us, which made me laugh. Yeah, um, <laughs> and the fact that like when they have the birthday party, they all forget his name. They're all singing happy birthday, and none of them know his name. Yeah. he just gets some rich guy. Goes, oh my god, I've forgotten his name. Oh my and it's like it's because he's not important enough to remember. And, you know, mm-hmm. again, the soundtrack's an absolute belter, to be fair, but, I mean, you know, it would be. Um, well, I mean, and then, uh, and then, I mean, yeah. I just, I don't even know which bit I was up to, but I just wrote, oh, Felix, he's shagging again. Mm-hmm. It's just a bit boring. Uh, yeah. You can't just throw me away. I gave you what you wanted. Everyone, put, Oh, yeah, everyone puts on a performance here. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, this is where they have, basically, they're arguing with each other. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 it's where Felix is, uh, uh, like, just shagging by the statue. And where it kind of, he basically says to him, like, you need to see someone. You make my, you know, you make my blood run cold. Um, and and I, I remember saying this to you, actually. I'm, I'm, I think I messaged you it saying, mm-hmm. I, oh, and I've wrote down, I've got it. This film is an X-rated The Cable Guy. The Cable Guy with tuxedos, rich people, vomit, and various other bodily fluids. Um, and then Felix is gone, and they're all like, and they're like, oh, how did it happen? It's like, well, he was with a girl, and the last person to see him was, and it was just like, this doesn't make much sense. I did, I did like the whole, like, broken wings thing with the because mm. he's got like antlers and and i got the fact he was like i don't know I, this kind of symbolism in it, but again none of it goes far enough it's all like mm. oh let's throw this in to make them feel like yeah this. because it's like, yeah. I, I think a lot of people i think a lot of people do reference that at least towards the end with the party where they talk about i think it's like greek mythology you know, where they've got the Minotaur at the end or Well apparently that was like apparently and, that was modelled yeah. after like Barry Keegan's body and stuff like that. Who knows? It, yeah. it, it just feels a bit like if you I don't know, if you wanted to go through all this. 
you know, it's like you should have like, looked at that film. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's like you know Greek mythology enthusiasts. It's about like them going, "Oh, I recognise that. <laughs> oh, I recognise that particular, um, <laughs> you know, semblance and everything." But you're completely right. It does feel, and again, like well, no one's going to remember that. No one's going to remember that though. Yeah, they, that, you know, yeah, you, that's you, the thing. Yeah, if you because, go and there's a, be- a beautiful cake there, it's covered in various bodily fluids. No one's going to care about the little golden chocolate coins in the middle of the cake. They're going to go, have you seen what's all over the all over it? To I be know honest, that's a really that, weird example, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like, well, to be honest, no uh, one's going to get to those morsels <laughs> because of all the all yeah. the grave and dirt and bath yeah. water. No well, one's going to get I, I, to that bit. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'd be evaluating why I was at that birthday party in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, uh. <laughs> You have a podcast to record. Why am I here? <laughs> Do I want the cake to take away? No, no, no. You, you keep it. Um, no, you're completely right. That that's the film in a nutshell, though. No pun intended. It's the fact <laughs> that you've got this film that is essentially, if you break it down, it's about a psychopath that tries to weasel his way in and take a house from these like very very wealthy people with, like, a lot of influence and things like that that are completely out of touch with the rest of the world. Now, the only issue with that is that there's nothing really substantial there. Like, as I said, it almost reminds me of, like, the TikTok version of Parasite. Now, bear with me here. It's like, you know in some of those TikTok videos or YouTube shorts where it's like they'll have, like, half the screen they've got the film or the clip or whatever, but then on the other side, they've got something completely unrelated, like a Family Guy clip or, I don't know, someone doing arts and crafts or Subway Surfers. Mm. You know, it's basically like, at the beginning, they have a very slow build-up to salt burn, and I have to admit, at some bits, I was like, oh my God, just get to salt burn, but and then they'll have moments that are just completely shocking and they completely disarm you. You're like, oh my God, why is he Why is he doing that to that poor girl? And then, you know, then they bring it back again and they're like, oh, and here's the slow bit. We're building character. Oh, look, a penis. And you're like, what, 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 what is this film? That's, that's what what is going on? Right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, why have you put this in front of my face? Why have you said... Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to have um, Barry Keegan wingies, you know, what, around at the very yeah. end, like that, that scene again. I mean, to be again, fair to him, yeah. if, if I, I mean, you know, muzzle tough to him, but, mm. you know, I mean, I wouldn't be shy either, if, anyway. But, yeah, but at the yeah, same again, time, though. <laughs> what's the point in it, though? Like, what's, the, I mean, it, but again, I said, like I said to my dad earlier, before I, if I mm. said I was going to review this, I said to him, like, he said, oh, I thought it was all right, pretty good. And I was like, yeah, but it's nothing I haven't seen a million times before. And then yeah. I also had a horrifying follow-on thought, thinking, oh, my God, I'm more cynical than my dad. Mm. Like, I used to be the positive one, and now I'm, like, even more cynical. And I don't think this is – this is not me and Satsu, for, for, for you, who's listening. Mm. I don't think this is us being pretentious or us being, like, film snobs. I mean, Satsu doesn't do a film podcast. He's a variety – no, that was a terrible – I was trying to do Scottish, and it went into some weird – he does a variety <laughs> podcast. Uh, I was going to say, are you – What the hell up there? You, what the hell up was, there? No, no, I was going to say, you, you, you go to the Barry Keegan School of Accents? <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> I think I did, yeah. Uh, I sound more Scottish when I try not to do anything. Uh, but, yeah, so I was um, – if this isn't us being like film snobs or anything or like, we're like mm-hmm. oh, well, the lighting wasn't quite good in this scene and all that mm-hmm. crap. It's nothing about that. It, it, it's okay. It's it's very, it, it, it's nothing that I haven't, it's, it's all right. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's decent. It whiles away the hours. And mm-hmm. let's be honest, if it wasn't for the, you know, the minging bit in it, you wouldn't be, like, it, no, I don't think many people will be talking about it, you know, and it, because it doesn't really have a lot to say. And, it, mm-hmm. and I think it, it kind of, and again, like, I've seen films that are all a bit weird, or all a bit oh, about hedonism, but I've seen it done a lot better. I've been, I can't remember what it's called. Rupert Grint did one oh, years ago. I mean, after Harry Potter, of course, mm. with a lot of people. Was it called Cherry something? And that was all about rich people and hedonism. And then that kind of was a decent one. I've remembered yeah. bits of that. And I saw The Posh Boys or whatever that one was called. You know, I've seen, like, The History Boys. I've seen, which was kind of about schools. And stuff. But anyway, I've seen, you know, I've seen plenty of those about, you know, The Crown's got plenty of it in about class. Mm-hmm. and <laughs> Totally different feel, of course. But um, 
you know, it, it, I, I've seen it before, and it was nothing that I wouldn't kind of, I wouldn't, would, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd say, oh, mm. I mean, I'd probably say the same as my mate. Like, mm, it's not worth watching. It's not, it's all right if you want to watch it for the sake of it, or you got a podcast that you'll get an episode out of it. Yeah, give it a go. It's mm. fun to kind of have a chat about. But outside of that, it's I, I won't ever watch it again, and that's the biggest mm. marker for me. If I'm, I mean, why, why would I watch it again? Because the what thing is, point? like. I'm not being a prude about this film. Like, I know there are films that have very graphic scenes of, you know, whether it's sex, violence, you know. If there's a point to it, then I can completely understand why you would have it. Like, in Parasite, there's a lot of violence at some bits, um, or other very similar films, you know, where basically it feels as if, and again, I don't want to really rag on the the writers too much, but it feels like the lazy guy to writing really wealthy people, if that makes sense. You know, it's like, oh, how can we make these wealthy people really unlikable? Let's give them a big house and make them degenerates. But there you go. Yeah, like like, like in, in, in your vernacular, it's like a cheat code, isn't it? Because that's mm-hmm. a big game. It's like, uh, like, right. like, what's the cheat code to posh entitled assholes? <laughs> like, oh, give them a big house. Have them dress for dinner with a tux mm-hmm. and all this, you know. And it's like, mm, is that okay? Fair, I mean, fair enough. But yeah, every yeah, I mean, every o'clock is wine o'clock, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, but like you said, I mean, for me, I did think the scene after Felix has died, and they try mm-hmm. and sit and have this normal breakfast, this normal lunch breakfast, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. and the other daughter, uh, uh, Venetia. <laughs> is pouring out wine and it just overflows and overflows. Mm. You got Farley sat there, he can't eat. Uh I mean I mean all he's sat there, he's not asked obviously, but then you've got um Richard E. Grant, the dad's kind of like trying to get the get the butler to shut the curtains and they can't because they're gonna wheel like the coffin past. And again it was like this is where the film like start again, like it lost me a little bit in the realism of like I don't care how rich you are. If someone's been found dead, the police aren't going to send your butler to come and get you from a room. They're mm-hmm. going to start talking to people. Then they don't, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, to be fair, who who knows? Maybe 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 you do get a bit more due deference. I don't know. And I know that obviously they'd be sensitive and whatnot because it's just some that's passed. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have the butler send doing errands for them. Yeah. Um, you know, like, can the police carry the body across the lawn, sir? Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think I don't think that happens if I'm honest. But anyway. And I did like the bit where, you know, they, they wheel the gurney past and you hear the wheels squeak and you literally have, like, you literally have Richard E. Grant. He puts his hands over his ears. Mm-hmm. Rosamund, like, Rosamund Pike just doesn't accept it. She's like, oh, like, they find him dead and she's like, oh, well, I best go and, uh, mm-hmm. I best go and check on the chickens or whatever the hell she's off to do. So, you know, I thought, you know, I thought that, that was, that was good. But again, I don't think it's nothing I haven't seen before. Um, and then, you know, the man begs him to stay. Uh, oh well, this is, he sleeps the grave. I mean, we've been over that enough. Let's not oh, yeah. let's not dig that up again. Well, hey, and um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, there, <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, <laughs> hey, it did make me watch it. I take my terrible jokes. Uh, Venetia, obviously, she accuses Ollie of uh, destroying her family. I don't know why. Everything's been roses since he turned up, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh, you're a moth. You've like wheedled your way, and you like." And then she's like shockingly found she's taking her own life, and I'm thinking, are we really meant to believe that like she has taken, taken her own life? life? Yeah. Like, oh, she just so happened to be having a bath with him, and no, not with him, but um, he doesn't drink yeah. this. He doesn't drink this bath, by the way. Yeah, why does everybody go and have a bath next to his room? Like, surely there's got to be more baths in that bloody house than that. Like, it might yeah, be an antique. Maybe they're hard to get over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh, wait, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go for your bath, darling? Are you going to go to the West Wing? No, no, uh, no, sweetness. I'm going to go next to Ollie's room and make sure the door's sadly ajar so you can see me and I all together. It's like, really? Like, what? It did remind me, to be fair, there was a point where, did you ever see a film? I bet, I bet Nerdstalgic's seen this. Uh, it's, oh, maybe he hasn't. Maybe it's a bit too, maybe he's not, maybe it's a bit out of his age, but did you ever see a film called The Little Vampire? With uh, oh, the kid out of no, the Yeah. Because there was a bit in this where they say, and Richard E. Grant plays like the vampire dad, 
a different kind of vampire than this. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a bit where <laughs> God no, why did I say that? There's a, bit, there's a bit where Richard E. Grant plays like Sackville, Hugh Sackville bag or whatever. And there was a bit in this where they were talking about some guy called Sackville. Now was like yeah, someone on that writing staff is a is a fan of the little vampire. Oh, sure. And right. I will not yeah. I will not hear like anything other. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was, uh, God, uh, that was, that was not a joke I was expecting to make. Um, yeah, she's found dead and she's like, oh, you're like a moth, you're quiet, harmless, attracted to shiny things, butting up against the window, just desperate to get in. And you've made your holes and everything. She reminded me, I was getting like Vanessa Kirby playing like Princess Margaret in the Crown type, uh, type feels from that. It, like, again, it's just, it's not, you know, it's not a bad film. It's not irredeemable. It's just not. I don't know, it's just not as good as I thought. And especially when everyone's making a big song and dance about it, you're like, oh, this has got to be good. And you go, oh, was that it? Anyway. Um, That's the thing, though. Like, I've got yeah. a question for you, though, about mm-hmm. Saltburn. No, like, if people didn't make a song and dance about it, like, if it wasn't winning all these awards and, you know, well, oh, maybe not what? awards, but, you know, yeah. well, not awards, yeah. but, you know, like, very highly acclaimed. If it wasn't getting talked about, would you still... Criticize. Well, obviously you would criticize it the same, but would you still think, oh, this is like even worse than what you think of it as? Um, I tr- I try not to. I try not to. Mm, try, when people say something's really really good, I do try and go in with a bit of an open a bit of an open mind. I do yeah. try and go in with an open mind, but I do find that people are I think our our expectations are a lot 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 lower than they used to be and I think mm. films that were made years ago like you wouldn't flipping wipe their boots with some of the crap we watch now like I watched you know and I know it's not everyone's type of film but I watched The Guns of Navarone last week and reviewed that and that's 1961 and I, I, I genuinely I haven't seen as good a film of that in years and you just think we we've really lost the art like the writings, we're basically mourning about the writing and the believability in the characters, and I just don't want, you know, and it, it's not the kind of film where they go, oh, just go with it, it's good fun to watch, you get to see how hedonistic they are, they don't really care, because there was a bit where they're all naked in the field drinking, and you think, well, really, if you had, like, three months off, you didn't have to go to work because you've all got loads of money, you don't have to worry about anything, you don't have to worry about bills, you don't have to paint the house, you don't have to even cook your meals, then, yeah, your life is probably more difficult in terms of it's completely pointless. So what do you do? Do you bring people along to try and make, you know, bring real people along to try and make it more entertaining? Like Ollie, but maybe that that makes kind of sense. But then the film's like too obsessed with having these shock moments, and it's like, okay, right. Well, but when you take the, those away, there's not a lot left. I would have liked the film to have kind of. I'm not saying take those out if you want them in it's your film, but just in terms of have a bit, it's just. For me, I get I get more kind of I get more bothered when um, there was like there's a glimmer of something there. Like if it's just irredeemable, if it's like reminiscence, you just go, it's horrific. Let's move on, and then you whinge about it for six months. But it, <laughs> but for me, it's like for this film, I'm not going to watch it again. I'm probably not going to think about it again, hopefully. Yeah. And um, you that that's about it. But I, I I try not to. It's when people like try and. Co- what I don't like is when people try and convince you you're wrong. Like, you don't like something, and then people go, oh, no, but what about this, this, and this? Like, no, I, I'm, I don't. Because I, I don't try and convince somebody who likes this that they're wrong. So then when someone tries to convince me vice versa that I'm wrong about not liking it. But I, I, I don't – I could have been worse with this film. I could have been – I genuinely thought it was all right. I enjoyed, it wasn't mm-hmm. – I didn't hate it. I wasn't – but I did spend a lot – I mean, there was a few bits where I was very much looking at my phone and – writing the notes and I was missing bits and I wasn't really bothered. And I'm watching it on a like a laptop right next to me. It's not like it's on a television like two feet away where I can kind of get distracted. So yeah. you know, with ear with headphones. So it was very much it was okay. It wasn't I was just I expected more out of it and I've seen Barry Keegan he was in Chernobyl, he was brilliant in that. He was in Dunkirk, which I watched last night and he was marvellous in that. Then I know he's done quite a few bits and I think the actors and actresses like they are very, very good in it. The cast's very talented. I just think overall it doesn't quite gel into, into something coherent. I think it had too many ideas. I didn't yeah. quite know which one to go with. Did you want to go with this art house, fluids everywhere, let's really go for it? 
did you want to go for this kind of murder mystery way? He's basically killing everybody, mm-hmm. you know, like a Midsummer Murders meets Tales of the Unexpected. God, there's some British references for you. Exactly. Did you want? To, <laughs> did you want to go with? Sorry, America. Did you want to go with? You know, did you want to go with a look at the class system and in 2006 and this that and it, which hasn't really changed? Do you what? Did you want to look at that? Yeah. Did you want to look at fam? You know, familial relationships in terms of when you've got loads of money and each staff and they don't mm-hmm. really. Yeah, I did like the fact they let Ollie out of the staff entrance. That really made me laugh. Like, I really laughed yeah. at that bit. Like, all the staff, like, all, cause you barely see it a lot of stuff. And they're all outside having a, having a, having a fag, like, way, like, all, outside smoking. <laughs> As, like, they send him out of the staff entrance, like, yeah, off you go. Mm. Um, Do you know what? Uh, I, I just when you were saying it's like all these kind of different films, you know, this, like, melting pot, this hot pot, or whatever, as you will, as you will, of films. It actually, I think the thing that draws a lot of people to this, and I don't know what you'll think about this when I say it, but you've seen The Great Gatsby, haven't you? You oh, know, with well, the remake. Years ago. Yeah, well, years yeah, ago. uh-huh. It reminds me of when that film came out, and again, I'm not targeting anyone in particular, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't, or if you didn't partake in what I'm about to say here, but... I remember when that film came out, you know, it was a decent film, it had a really interesting message and everything, but I remember when that came out and everybody started having Gatsby-themed parties, so it was like the complete opposite Oh God, message. what the hell, yeah. what the hell is a version of a salt, I don't want to know what salt is. No, 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 I'm not saying they had salt bar right. parties, I hope <laughs> I mean, they had a you know, PG version of the ending, as it were, people dancing in their, you know, their mansions and everything. But I think with that, with people missing the point of The Great Gatsby being about how opulence and, like, wealth isn't, you know, the be-all and end-all, you should be focusing more for a fulfilling life, etc. You know, I'm really wanted in that message down, but for the sake of brevity, that's what it is. But and this, it felt as if people more liked the aesthetic of it rather than the message it was trying to convey. You know, they liked the big glamorous house. They liked the style with the, you know, the clothing and everything. The kind of fantasy, maybe, of living in, like, such a big house like Saltburn and so on. So I think that they were more attracted to the aesthetic as it were they were more attracted to the aesthetic rather than a substantial message because yeah, well, when I looked yeah. sorry. Sorry, no, sorry, sorry I was just going to say like because when I looked up videos for it you know videos. it was a lot well, <laughs> video, well you know what I mean um, I know what you mean I, I was seeing like a lot of fan videos of you know um Murder on the dance floor. I was about to say bodies again. I'm thinking of let like, the bodies hit the floor. You know that's what, Oh yeah, or cheap money just doesn't he? <laughs> um, so murder on the dance floor is playing, and they're kind of cutting these moments in with the you know with the song. And don't get me wrong, these videos are very well made, but again, it kind of hammers the point in that people aren't really well as far as I know anyway. A lot of people aren't watching this because they want some kind of deconstruction about the things or the woes of society, yeah. like upper class. I do, think it's, very, class, I do yeah. think it's very shallow. I do think mm-hmm. it's very shallow. Yeah. Oh, my microphone fell down. Hang on a sec. No, 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 yeah, no, I no. do think I do think it's very shallow. To be fair. Oh, well, I might as well mm-hmm. leave it there then. If it's been there, I'll, as it doesn't fall off. But yeah, I, I do think it's very shallow, and I think it's and maybe maybe the, maybe we're not the audiences. I don't know, but mm-hmm. you do think. Uh, what, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd, uh, it's just there's just not a lot there, and I, no. I think it's one of those films that might have a bit of an you know might have a bit of an impact now, but no one's going to be talking about this in a couple of years. It's not, you no. know, I'm not I'm going to go at anybody now. I just I genuinely think it's it's just one of them things that comes along. Everyone, you know, it, for me it's a bit like an avatar in a kind of weird way. It kind of comes along. Everyone's like, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen this? And everyone kind of watches it and goes. Yeah, is that what everyone was banging on about? And there's nothing wrong with things going viral, viral and these smaller, smaller-ish. You know, these films kind of getting, a, you know, the streaming ones getting a bit more, which I think it's an Amazon Prime one, getting, or at yeah. least partly, mm-hmm. getting a bit more kind of um, 
uh, what's the right word, getting a bit more kind of uh, awareness around. There's nothing wrong with that. And yeah, mm. there's nothing wrong with saying to people, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen that? Because good God, that's what word of mouth, that's what films and series need. They need people to be like, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen that? But I mean, I think in this day and age, though, with the, you know, the rise of like TikTok and social media and things, it's a lot easier to make trends and things out of certain moments. Because, I mean, as I said, like, I know I keep going on about it, but the whole dancing in, like, a big house, like, the end of um, (laughs) this film, you know, because if you look at that scene, and again, you know, the viewer's discretion is greatly advised there, but, you know, I mean, you can maybe make the argument that the reason he's doing that is because, oh, he's shedding his skin and he's, you know, his true self is, like, this horrible person, like, at a push, maybe, but... I think the director maybe thought, mm, on the other hand, I mean, if he put, <laughs> if he put his, um, you know, if he put his uh, salt burn, as it were, <laughs> into like a mound of dirt, then what else can we get him to do? This film does genuinely feel like, you know that way you get someone who wants to prank someone or dare them to do things, but it just gets worse and worse and worse. So it's like, <laughs> oh, I bet you wouldn't drink that bath water. Oh, you drank it. Oh, I bet you won't become a vampire. Oh, he's become a vampire. Oh, I bet you would Oh, wait, no, he did that himself. I didn't even dare him to do that. <laughs> and yeah. then at the and end, that... it's like, oh, I dare you to dance naked in this house. And yeah. <laughs> maybe it, maybe it speaks, maybe you were just not, maybe it speaks to, a different generation of like, oh look, Maybe, we're being yeah. all dead shock and we're being dead edgy, and it's like, yeah, but your film's a bit shit. <laughs> like, I'm not no. being awful, but like, you know, we, this is not. It's not high art. It's not like. No. I think this. To be fair, I could have been. I mean, might listen back and think I was harsh, but I don't think it's. Mm-hmm. It, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't have much more to say. To be fair, I mean, no, he kill no. he kills them all. He gets the house and he he's, he lives. Well, who knows what happens, but. Yeah, yeah it's all right. <laughs> yeah, he moves it. God knows what his parents think. Yeah, I mean, do, does he go yeah. back to university? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I say this on, like, Chats and Army all the time as well, that if you enjoy this film and everything, I'm not going to take that away from you. You know, like, you do you, but personally, I feel as if, and I don't want to say this in a contrarian way to be like, oh, I don't think this is good because... You know, I didn't like it, and it's popular, so therefore I really hate it. But I just think, it's something you brought up earlier as well, it's just the fact that there could have been so much more to this film. There could have been so much more to the conversation, the themes and everything. But at the end of the day, it's just like a middle-class cycle. Yeah. So I do worry that... No, 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 it's me interrupting again. I do worry that... Not worry, it's the wrong word, but I do think maybe this is part and parcel and, and a good example of maybe younger generations' views of films that, mm. fit, or, or maybe at least what films they're being given on the whole, which are, you know, superhero films, you know, the, like the fast food of films in terms of, you know, you, mm-hmm. what the hell is that music? Anyway, you watch it, you listen to it, you watch it, you listen to it, uh, uh, you 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 know it, it's over and done with it's very forgettable it 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 pops a few neurons in your brain for a couple of hours and then it's mm. it's gone and done whereas i wonder if and i know we're podcasters and mm. if you can call us call me that you podcasters and you talk about films or you talk about video games or you talk about topics and you like to delve into things more but it doesn't mean i can't watch something and enjoy it and i did genuinely watch this and i did shockingly enjoy it i wouldn't watch it again but i didn't hate it watching it i thought yeah it's all right and that's decent that's that's a decent it was okay it was all right but i wouldn't then go on to try and sell it to people and be like oh my god it's amazing yeah. and like mm-hmm. like like somebody else's film opinion if someone absolutely loved this and thinks it's a masterpiece and good for you like i'm really happy that it it connected with you like that but it didn't connect that, like that with me um mm-hmm. I'm, I'm of the wrong audience who knows but i think it's it was just maybe we look for something a bit more in films maybe that's just mm-hmm. our generation i don't know but yeah i, yeah, I, don't, I don't know i i, I just <laughs> Yeah, I think they were trying. It just to wasn't be... that. It just wasn't that good. Yeah. Let's. I'll just. I'll cut the podcast. Yeah. BS yeah. for a second. <laughs> no, like, not that. I, yeah. Not that I put an act on anyway. But mm-hmm. it just wasn't. It just wasn't that good. There's my verdict. It's, it's just not that good. Take out the shock. It's just not. It's just not that good. There's, there's far better to watch out there. Mm-hmm. Go yeah. watch the boy next door. Mm-hmm. 
I watch that instead. Oh, Parasite. Yeah, I'll have to yeah, watch that. Yeah. Like, genuinely, if I'm looking back on it, I think, like, just as a kind of closing point, but I do think that there are so many better films that have done a better job of the ideas that they're trying to convey across. And I get what they're trying to convey at times, but then at other times it just becomes muddled and shock value and weird choices with the characters. It is quite a messy film, but not messy in an enjoyable way. Messy in a you're looking at whoever you're watching it with going, should we turn it off? Uh, let's see where it goes. And then by the end of it, you're like, is that going to be two hours? So I'm going to get back. Yeah, honestly, like if you're morbidly curious, it's on Amazon Prime for free. Well, not really free, but if you're curious about it, don't watch it with people with, you know, don't watch mild, it with loved ones. Yeah, like mild sensibilities, as it were. Like, I mean, I'm not usually one to clutch my pedals, as it were, when it comes to these <laughs> kind of things. Because, I mean, let's face it, I have seen quite bad scenes in films where I've gone, oh my god, that's horrific, or oh, I don't know about that. But for these, it genuinely turned me off the film. I was like, why did they do that? But again, not because I thought, oh, it's because of some artistic greatness. It's It just felt... And I don't want to be too critical saying lazy, but it just felt like the bare minimum of what they had to do. And then, again, as I said, the like I'm sounding like one of the people I was criticising there, but the aesthetic is pretty well done. You know, the Oxford slash Saltburn scenes, you know, they're done really well. The cinematography, as I said, is great. The framing of it's good. Why it's in a 4 by 3 ratio, I don't know. That's the only thing that kind of threw me off. I don't know if you saw that. Can't say I noticed, to be honest. Yeah, like, you know, just the two bars at the side. I mean, I could be totally wrong and be thinking of a different film, but I'm sure it was Saltburn. And I kind of thought, oh, they went the Zack Snyder approach. <laughs> Hey, nah, we can. Oh, well, um, it's ne- never a good. Fr- it's never yeah. a good way to go now. He did *Dawn uh, of the Dead* in 2004, yeah. and he hasn't. He hasn't made a good film since. So he's. Oh, I've seen. I mean, I've seen *Rebel Moon* twice, and I will say. I've not. Oh, I've not oh, seen it yet. Not good. <laughs> I wouldn't say. Not good. I'd say it's worse. Well, it's worse than salt. No, sorry, I wouldn't say it's worse than salt. Well, is it worse than salt burn? It's not as graphic as salt burn, but. It's not very good, because I was talking to the guys over at Seismic Cinema about it, and yeah, yeah, they've done a whole episode on it themselves, which is definitely worth checking out, but oh. it's not a good, it's not a good film. It's, he's trying to, and I know this is a different film review entirely, but he tries to take so many sci-fi properties, because I think it was supposed to be a... Star Wars film, I could be wrong on that, but... No, you no, know, apparently it, could... it was like a, a rejected yeah. R rated, which is why I kind of wanted to give it a go, because I don't really care about Star Wars, yeah. uh, clutch your pearls for that one, but yeah, I did. Yeah. So I thought, oh, maybe I can go into it, and I've heard really mixed reports, like Saltburn, I've yeah. heard people say it's good, I've mm-hmm. heard people say it's terrible, and and to be fair, the fact that it's getting people talking is, mm-hmm. you know, is, is all right, you know, I'm so... Hey. Yeah. Yeah, but for all the wrong reasons. Like, I've seen it twice, and as yeah. I said, it's not... Why twice? It wasn't though? by choice, <laughs> I will say. Right, OK. It's, yeah, it was just, it's because it takes things from, and if you're a Warhammer 40k fan, you'll notice very, very similar things. Like the, well, not Space Marines, but like the Imperium, you know, like the main human faction. You see a lot of that influence. You see a lot of influence from just other franchises, you know, you're like, okay, I've seen this from Star Trek, I've seen this from that, yeah. you know, like, there's a lot, it's, it's not that it's messy, I just think it's bloated, um, yeah. unlike Saltburn, which is just bloated with a side of um, someone sticking their you-know-whats into the ground, as if he's going to grow yeah. another Felix, um, but that's another <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand because if he, if he, if Felix is essentially just somebody he needs to get out of the way, mm-hmm. because that's all it becomes. If it was just about Felix and wanting to become him and mm-hmm. and then killing him, I'd be like, right, okay, I get that. But then the fact he goes on to kill the whole family 
or at least wait. Yeah. I mean, one of them waits for one of them to die, but then kills the rest of the family so he can have the he can have salt burn. Well, why? I d- I just yeah. it didn't. It, it just felt like a lot of things happening, and it's like yeah, but there needs to be a point. Like, what's the point? Yeah. And then, but then again, it wasn't the kind of film where it's like oh, there isn't a point. That's the point. Mm-hmm. It, it it very much it doesn't know what it is, and I, I, that, that's why I think we. I've I'd struggle to kind of understand it, but uh, I hope this has been a better review than the film. But I, I have a fear I've been all over the bloody place. But so's the no, film. No. So, what's it expect you to do? Like, I don't. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> I was going to say I know you're not big on like ratings at the end, but like, what would you even? Like, what would be the unit of measurement for this film? Would it be like, oh, do, um, like two um, Barry is, is, is Keegan this... dongs out of ten? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> you know? Would it? Would it be? Well, that yeah, that'd be a big rate, Jesus. Would it be? Um, I don't know. What do you think this film is? Is it a great? Is it like a mound of earth, or is it a little mole hill of earth? What is it? Uh, God knows. God knows what it. God knows. Um, two grave glory holes out of ten you know? <laughs> <laughs> three well, bathwater six yeah. out of five you know oh Jesus <laughs> yeah. yeah six slurps out of seven not bad I think um, yeah I mean for me I, I did have a, a rating system where but went only for a, in my yeah. old podcast and I think I would have been yeah I'd, I'd watch it on a plane that would be my mm. oh god no 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 don't watch it on a plane Jesus Christ no, oh, don't watch no. it on a plane mm-hmm. I've, my brain's just gone there's other people around you yeah, do you mm. don't, don't watch well, it on the I actually, um, speaking of that, I actually did have a moment like that where I was watching, I think it was Blade Runner uh, 2049. And, <laughs> yeah, I got to a particular scene, for anyone who's seen Blade Runner they'll know, or the sequel, they'll know what I'm talking about, where it's like you meet the main antagonist, but then you see a very, like, I can't remember. I don't know if it's like a robot or it's somebody else, like a nudity scene anyway. Um, and yeah, you you better believe I fast forwarded that in the plane because I was like, Jesus Christ, there's too many people yeah. on this plane. Well, it feels like in this film particularly and films as the modern era that male nudity is absolutely fine. You can have everything you want. But female nudity seems to have really died in the background. And, 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 and you know me, don't get into politics. I don't understand the reason for it anyway. But this film was a bit like, oh yeah, we want to show everything, but then I, I, I we, we don't, we don't, we, I don't think we see any, we barely see anything of women, but we see everything of a man. And it's like, right, okay, well, I don't, mm-hmm. what? I mean, to be, I mean, you know, I, I, maybe we're not the right audience for it. I don't know, but uh, it's just not, it's mm-hmm. just not that good. But I, I genuinely, I don't, I, I, I really shouldn't say I'm spent, but. Uh, <laughs> but I am. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, do you have any more closing thoughts on it, Satsu? I, 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 yeah. All I would say is, if it's your thing, fair enough. But I wouldn't go out my way to recommend this film. Um, as, as I said, there's just so many films that do this particular story better. Just go see that, or. I don't know, YouTube soul burning thing, if you're really curious. There was actually one someone had uploaded, and I can't even remember why, or what, what the re- well, I know the reason for it, but they'd uploaded the ending, but they had put, like, a huge black bar at the bottom. But you know that way where it's like, oh, you have to, you know, censor the particular bit. No, no, they just, like, cut the screen in half. So he just looked like a torso, like dancing to murder on the dance floor. And you're like, people who are watching this out of context are going to be so goddamn confused. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But yeah, the, my closing points, or sorry, my closing thoughts are, uh, is, yeah, as you said, if the shocking scenes weren't in this film, this film would be really relegated into obscurity by now but because of those shocking scenes and the way that it's been handled and PR and social media and things I think that's what's giving it its leg up and honestly as I said if you enjoy this film all power to you but yeah it just wasn't for me no me neither Mm. And it's not because of all the minging bits. It's just mm. not that good. Nah. She's not that good. I don't know how many times I've said that, and apologies, but it's just, it's just not that good. Mm. Uh, but but as ever, I thank you for listening. 
Uh, Seti, would you... Well, me and Chatsin Army are a part of the Podpack Collective. So... Uh, it's, it's not a communism thing, don't worry. I have, I have been asked that. It's not a communism thing. Uh, <laughs> someone asked about collective. Would you? <laughs> it's been a strange week. Would you? Uh, would you like to tell the people what that's all about, Satsu? Because I think you're probably be- a better place than I am to kind of. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, it's it's a, it's a group of podcasters who basically, as you said, we were doing exactly what we were doing before, collaborating, trying to help each other out, and just have just a bit more of a. A group where we could, you know, that I think it's five of us so far, or, or at least of the off, where we can yeah. essentially search. Mm-hmm. It's it's Chatsin Army, who's like, you know, El Capitano. You've got, obviously, myself, Review Yourself. You've got Luke from the, the Nostalgic Podcast. We've got Dan from Casting Views. Does Dan have a co-host, or is he on his own now? Oh, my brain's gone. Anyway, Seismic Cinema, the fellows of, of Seismic Cinema, and we've also got two girls, one reusable cut podcast. I finally got it right. Oh, you got always, it, yeah. <laughs> I always want, yeah. Um, so basically, just uh, that that's the five for now, and just until we kind of get on our feet, mm-hmm. and we're just about kind of supporting each other and having episodes like this every now and again, which to be fair, like you said, we were already doing already, really, weren't we? We were already, yeah, we, I mean, we knew was, each other. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was the idea of the Podpack Collective, because I did see a lot of other podcasters kind of band together in groups and networks, and at this stage, well, I wouldn't call it a network, um, I would still say that... that it's not because you've got social yeah. network where... <laughs> well, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing, though, it's like, well, we're doing that anyway, so I kind of thought, well, why not just make it formal, you know, like, come under, like, this banner of just this one group and everything um and i don't know if you mentioned them there but we've also got a new member the although technically i'm part of it so it's like insider podcast (laughs) the stop drop and roll initiative podcast um which is like a D and D podcast that I'm part of, but honestly, as you said, there are just so many amazing podcasts. She and nepotism. She and nepotism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, all I the podcasts are just it's... mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all secretly backhanders. Yeah. Uh, just, which is yeah. is a phrase for giving money. No, I'm joking. It's not really. Yeah. We don't get money. <laughs> no, not yet. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, if you want to find uh, more of my content, then. Um, then you can find me on our website, chatsandarmy.com, where I collaborate with, you know, a bunch of amazing podcasters, yourself included. We've done a couple of episodes together where we talked about podcasting and Star Trek First Contact, another fantastic Still episode. game. Yep, still well, game as well. Well, that was yours, technically. But <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, if you want to check out my, ooh, I suppose, like, D and D premiere, as it were. Um, yeah, you can check it out on the Stop, Drop, and Roll initiative. We've just dropped our first episode. When the next episode will come out, I don't know. But yeah, for everything else, you can check me out on Spotify, iTunes, and yeah, really all good podcast apps. But again, Sean, thank you so much for yeah inviting me on for this episode. No, thanks for giving up your time. I thought, you know, you've got half a day off. I've got a surprise mm-hmm. midweek day off, so I thought might mm-hmm. might as well. And I thought it's one of those films where I watch it and I think if I don't talk about it within a couple of days, I, I'm not interested because it mm-hmm. just goes, oh, and then yeah. my notes mm-hmm. don't mean anything. And you know, it, every now and again, you know, you've got to play the game and give the audience something new, and hope that it it sticks. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> this film, yeah, it's going to take a while to get rid of this one in my brain. I think. But uh, <laughs> not for a good reason. But yeah, thank you to everyone for listening, and thank you to you for 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 taking the time to to come on and discuss this wonderful, uplifting film. Cheers, everybody! Welcome to Shatsunami, a variety podcast that discusses topics from gaming and films to anime and general interests. Previously on Chatsunami, we've analysed what makes a good horror game, conducted a retrospective on Pierce Brosnan's runs James Bond, and listened to us take deep dives into both the Sonic and Halo franchises. Also, if you're an anime fan, then don't forget to check us out on our sub-series, Chatsunani, where we dive into the world of anime. So far, we've reviewed things like Death Note, Princess Mononoke, and the hit Beyblade series. If that's so- sounds like your cup of tea then you can check us out on spotify itunes and all good podcast apps as always stay safe stay awesome and most importantly stay hydrated